Good morning, serve teams. Um, I, I don't know about you guys, but this week has been just extra heavy, and I think that's a good thing that it's been extra heavy this week. Uh, it's caused me and my family to, to pray a whole bunch about the world and, and just what is going on uh, as far as uh, just uh, the global pandemic and people's well-being, health, safety, uh, the economy, those types of things, but also the injustices that have been going on for so, so long. Um, and the murder of Mr. Floyd and so many that have come before him, the injustices that have happened and how that needs to be, uh, there needs to be change. I mean, it has to happen. Uh, God does not uh, see us as, as different uh, standards. He sees us as his beautiful children, his creation, each and every one of us. And we need to be seen and respected and treated uh, as such. Um, I, I've been uh, having this scripture on my heart, and I want to read it to you now. It's Matthew 5. Um, 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it in, on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Church serve teams, we were called to be the light of the world, not just to be a light of the world, but to influence those around us in our house, those people that are in our communities. Um, and we, I think, uh, sometimes can get in our own rhythms and can get into the thought of we're, we're serve team on the weekend. We go on the weekend and we serve. But that's not it. That, that's just like a, such a small sliver of what we're called to be. We're called to serve those, be a light uh, around us, uh, to be a light to the world so that be, be, people may know and praise the name of Jesus Christ. I've been so proud of, of uh, so many of you. Um, I'm proud of all of you, but I'm so proud of so many of you. I've seen on Facebook pictures of those of you who've uh, been at peaceful rallies. You've uh, been a part of uh, giving a voice to those that have not been heard for so long. Uh, you've passed out waters at, at those marches. You've, you've been a part of and stood shoulder to shoulder with, with those that are, are hurting uh, and um, been, been a voice. You've, you've um, done, been, been being a part of uh, a solution. Um, you've also been reaching out to those who uh, you know are hurting, whether it be through um, economic stuff, whether it be through um, uh, injustices, the people that have been affected. Uh, and um, I've talked to many of you who've been serving uh, in, in whatever way, whatever capacity you can. So I want that to be my encouragement to you. Go be the light to the world. Go be uh, a lampstand uh, sitting on a hill. Um, to, to light up those uh, uh, around you. Um, I, I know that as we seek to emulate Jesus, he did not come to uh, be comfortable. He did not come to just like wait things out. He came to serve and go out to the people. And when that happened, more people came to him to, to hear the good news. And I think that's the same for each one of us. As we share the gospel, whether it be through our words or through our actions, the way we love those uh, around us, um, we're not only going to reach out, but people are going to reach out to us to hear the good news, to, to, to step into light. Um, and to, so that's my encouragement this week to you all. Uh, I love you all so much. I'm proud of you. Um, we're praying. Um, just for our land, Second uh, Chronicles four seventeen talks about praying for the healing of our land, and not just here in Denver, but globally. We love you guys, um, and we'll hopefully see you sometime in the near future. I don't know what that looks like at all. It may be a little while still, but uh, we love you, we miss you, and we'll talk to you soon.